rescued this Toshiba satellite pro from the recyclers it seemed a shame to recycle it because it's in quite good condition see the track pads got hardly any sign of wear on it it's an Intel Pentium dual core I can't remember if it's 1.6 or 1.8 gigahertz somewhere around that mark it's got a Windows Vista basic label there Firstly, I want to see if it works, and if it does, I'm going to try and install Peppermint Linux on it. So let's boot it up. Looking good so far. It's got a version of Windows on it. Vista Home Basic. Let's have a look at the task manager, see what it's doing. The CPU usage is around 54%, memory 53%. It's not actually showing what's using the processor. Okay, CPU usage has dropped back to 10%, 18%. Is it finished? Right. In the control panel, systems maintenance, system, Toshiba, an experience index of a massive 2.2, Pentium dual CPU. T2330 sorry did I say 1.8 it's actually 1.6 gigahertz and 2 gigabytes of RAM which is the most it can take and at the moment it's got a 32 bit operating system on it now there's not much installed on here apart from the operating system and um, browser it has Firefox and all the usual maintenance stuff. This one's actually got SpyBot on it, CC Cleaner, AVG for antivirus. And the hard drive is actually divided into three partitions. It has a hidden one for reinstall, partition for the program for Windows which was 37.2 gigabytes and it's got 5.683 so that's uh, say 32 gigabytes for the operating system and it's got a separate partition for data which is using about a gigabyte so let's close it down what I'm going to try is to see how well it performs with Linux on it Let's go shut down. Okay, let's reboot. Which allows us to choose a boot option. We're going to go for the USB flash drive, which has Peppermint Linux on it. To install, you have to go into the Live, try Peppermint OS Live.
My booting from a USB stick is going to be slower than from a hard drive, so it does take a little while to boot. Uh, first thing I see it's set up for a USA keyboard and I need a UK keyboard so we go into all settings so we go into the keyboard settings layout we need to add English UK Okay. English US delete. So we've only got English UK left. And the flag there has changed to the Union Jack. So we're happy with that. So we've got the right keyboard set up. Next thing we need to do is to repetition the hard drive. Now normally I use a program called Gparted, but I don't believe this one has it. It has um, a disk management program. And we can see the partitions on here. The first partition is the hidden one which is used to reinstall back to default. That one was the Windows one, Partition 2. We have the Data one, and then it has a bit of free space on the end. Um, not likely ever going to want to reinstall Vista on here, so we delete that one. So we click on Delete. It says, are you sure you want to delete the partition? delete yes that's now become free space so we do that for all three petitions click on the minus don't know where that come from delete and then the data one, delete. So now we have the hard drive for all the partitions deleted. So we can close that. And then to install, we just double click on the install icon. First screen, select your language, which for me is English. Continue. Now it wants to connect to the Wi-Fi network. So I'll select my Wi-Fi, click on connect. It's asking for the password. So I hope I type that right. Click on connect. Yes, you are now connected to the Wi-Fi network, which is good. Right, we have two options here. One is to download updates while installed in Peppermint. I don't normally tick that one because it takes longer and I have had installs fail when I've selected that. So I'd rather do the updates once it's installed but I normally do tick the second one which is to install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, Flash, MP3 and other me media. Click on continue. The next screen gives you the choice of whether you're going to use the whole disk. If you want to encrypt Peppermint installation for security, I don't normally bother with that. Use LVM. Um, on this one, it only has an 80 gigabyte hard drive, which I'm not really going to change or anything. So I'll leave that unticked. Something else lets you go into a manual partition screen where you can set up your own partitions. But for this one, we'll just use the first option, which is Erase Disk and Install Peppermint. Click Continue. 
Next there will be a pop-up which will confirm how the hard drive is going to be formatted and there's only going to be two partitions. One is the main partition with all the programs and everything in it and the second one is a swap partition. So if you're happy with that just click continue Next screen is asking for your location. It's come up correct as London. Continue. Confirm your keyboard layout. Got English UK, English UK, which is fine. So continue. Okay, the next screen is asking who are you? First of all, type your name. Give a computer name, come up with the model of the computer, Satellite Pro L40. You can either leave that or change it to anything you want. You will select a username based on the name you type in. You can again either change that to anything you want or leave it as, as the default. The next box is to select a password. Underneath that box you have the option to log in automatically which won't ask your password each time you log in. Or you can select require my password to log in and also an option to encrypt the home folder which I'm not really bothered about on this one. And I am going to select log in automatically so I don't have to type my password every time. Then click continue. And while you've been doing that, in the background, it's been copying files. We are well over halfway done with copying files. We'll skip to the end, to when all the files are copied. OK, it's finished copying files. It's now installing the system. And that's it, installation complete. The time on the camera here says it's taken 36 minutes for a full installation of Linux. So we just need to restart. From start to finish took 38 minutes. First thing you need to do now that you have installed Peppermint Linux is to update. So if you click on the shield, the update manager will pop up. And just click on install updates. It will ask for your password. Click on OK. You can actually watch what the um, update manager is doing moment it's downloading the files. It said there was 114 megabytes to download which on my really slow internet is going to take a little while so I'll probably skip till they've all downloaded. OK, they've all downloaded. It's now installing the updates. It 
This is probably going slower than it would normally because I'm running simple screen recorder. And as you can see, it's taking a third to half of the uh, processor power. Okay, the updates are nearly finished. And that's it. Now when it updated it installed a new kernel so really you need to reboot. You don't have to at this stage, you can carry on working and it will use the new kernel at the next reboot but for now I'm going to reboot it and then start to install some additional programs which I will show in the next video. So thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.